Well, last time we read Masterpiece, James and Marvin had found the missing drawing, um, but unable to get hold of his dad, James had called Denny and told them that they were at department. I wonder what will happen. Chapter 33. Trapped. Marvin froze. Denny! Don't tell Denny! He wanted to scream. But of course, James had no way of knowing that Denny was a thief. He was already babbling ecstatically into the phone. No, really! I'm in someone's apartment, this guy, Gordon Perry. The address is... Here, James read from the crinkled label. 236 East 74th Street, apartment 5D. No, don't tell him! Marvin raced onto James's hand. It's the real one, I know it is. I... I can't explain on the phone. Can you get my dad? There was a long pause. Oh, James said. He is? OK, but you'll tell him and Christina too. And can you please hurry? I don't know when this guy might come back. He hung up and looked down triumphantly at Marvin. We did it, he crowed, dancing around the table. Dad and Christina weren't there. They'd have gone to look for me, but Denny's going to find them and tell them. And then they'll all come over here. Everything's going to be fine. Oh no, Marvin slumped in despair. This was impossible. How could he make James understand that they were in terrible danger? Nobody knew when they were here but Denny. And Denny, the real thief, was on his way to the apartment. He certainly wouldn't tell Carl or Christina anything. Marvin trembled. What would he do with the drawings when he got here? More important, what would he do with James? James lifted his hand and peered at Marvin, tilting his head to one side. What's the matter, little guy? You don't seem very happy. Marvin took a deep breath, trying to shake off his hopelessness. He had to try and convince James to leave the apartment and to take the drawings with him, but how? He crawled onto the end of James's finger and motioned with his front legs. Where do you want to go now? James asked, looking at him quizzically. I think we should just wait till they all get here. Marvin continued to gesture towards the briefcase. James walked doubtfully over to the closet and crouched on the floor, holding out his hand so Marvin could disembark. Marvin crawled straight to the part of the briefcase with a handle and latches and waited there expectantly. You want me to shut it again? James asked. Marvin climbed onto one of the latches. Why? Denny and Dad and Christina are on their way here. Can't we let them do it? Marvin tapped his front legs imperatively. James paused. I'm scared I'll wreck the drawing. When Marvin didn't budge, he sighed. You can be really bossy, do you know that? He fiddled with the packaging sheets. But I guess you've been right about most things so far, and you did find that drawing. He sighed again. OK, watch out. Gently, he wrapped the paper sheets over fortitude, and while Marvin clung to the latch, closed the briefcase. Marvin was about to jump off when he caught sight of something under the briefcase's handles. Imprinted in the worn leather, faintly traced in gold. What was it? Letters, he realised. Three of them. Faded, almost beyond recognition. Something stared in a remote part of Marvin's brain. Something from the human world. Three letters on Mrs Pompaday's bathroom towels. Three letters on Mr Pompaday's silver cufflinks. Three letters on the pen case that Carl gave James for his birthday. Look, your initials, so everyone will know it's yours. Initials. Denny's initials. Marvin went crazy. He leapt into the air, rolled over, waved all his legs and spun in a mad circle. Here, look, James, now you'll know. The letters were so faded and small that only a beetle would ever notice them. A beetle and a boy who always pays attention. You're doing it again, James said in amazement. Calm down, what's wrong with you? Maybe you're having a seizure like Billy Dunwill did after he got hit by that baseball last summer. Marvin crouched directly above the initials and pounded his front legs on the leather. Oh, James said, yeah, I see it. Somebody's initials. He bent over the briefcase and squinted. So what? I can't even read them. D something? D E M? Is that what you wanted me to see? Why? Why do you care about that? Marvin stayed right where he was, determined not to move until James made the connection. He continued to tap his front legs. D E M? Okay. Who is that? James asked him. 
I guess it's not Gordon Perry. But he could have borrowed someone else's briefcase. Or maybe this is the guy who helped him steal the drawing. Marvin spun in a circle and waved his legs madly. That's it? This is the guy who helped him steal Fortitude? OK, but I don't know anyone with the initials. James stopped. He squinted at the top of the briefcase, angling it towards him. What's this? he asked, tracing his finger over a square insignia printed on the leather. Marvin saw it too, on top of the case, a small box with symbols inside it. It's letters too, James said. G-E-T-T-Y, he read. Getty. Wait, isn't that Denny's Museum, out in California? His grey eyes widened. Turning to Marvin, he whispered, What's Denny's last name again? Max something. McGuffin. He shook his head. But why would he? He couldn't have. He was the one who... Please, Marvin begged silently. If there was such a thing as mind reading, he needed James to do it right now. James stopped again and then sucked in his breath. (gasps) Oh my gosh, if it is Denny, he's coming. We have to get out of here. Yes, finally he understood. Marvin leapt onto James's outstretched hand and scooted under his jacket cuff. In a panic, James grabbed the handle of the briefcase and ran to the door of the apartment. They rushed into the hallway just as the elevator dinged. What if it's Denny? James whispered, frantic. He whirled around. We have to take the stairs. Where are they? As the elevator doors began to open, he ran down the hall towards a broad metal door with a lit up red sign all over it. Hurry, Marvin thought, hurry. James pushed through the door into a narrow, bleak stairwell. He thudded down the first flight of stairs, the briefcase banging against his legs. I hope he didn't see us. I hope he didn't see us, he kept whispering to Marvin like a magical incantation as he rounded the corner and took the second flight of steps, two stairs at a time. Marvin clung onto the jacket cloth, bouncing helplessly against James's wrist, craning to see if they were being followed. Finally, they came to the first floor and burst into the lobby. James raced across the entryway, heaved open the massive front door and ran down the steps to the sidewalk. Outside, he paused only a moment then took off down the street through the fast-falling snow. Chapter 34. Reunion Marvin shrank back from the chill and scrambled further underneath the jacket cuff, poking out just enough of his head to see. He was so exhausted from his prolonged bout of sign language that he could hardly think what to do next. Fortunately, James seemed filled with purpose. He yanked his hood over his head and told Marvin, We have to call my dad. Maybe his cell phone is working now. It had better be. He trotted down the slippery sidewalk to a restaurant on the street corner. Inside, a hostess stood at the front door with a sheaf of menus in her hand. Um, excuse me, James said shyly. Could I? Do you think I could? The woman bent down, smiling. What is it, honey? Where's your mother? Are you meeting someone here? James shook his head, blushing. Could I use your phone, please? Oh, are you lost? Of course you can. Come back here. She beckoned him behind the desk and lifted the receiver, pressing a button. There, that's the outside line. Do you know your phone number? James nodded, biting his lip. Quickly, he dialed. Marvin heard his joyful exhalation and felt a rupture of relief. Dad! Dad, it's you! There was a long pause on James's end while Carl's anxious exclamations cascaded through the phone line. No, I'm OK, Dad. Everything's OK. Sorry. Sorry, I... No, no, I'm not in the museum. Dad, listen. Marv heard James groan in frustration. Dad, wait in Christina's office. I'm coming right now, OK? Just wait there. James plunked the phone back into its cradle and turned to the door. Where are you going, honey? the hostess asked. Don't you want to wait here? No, it's okay, James mumbled. Thanks for letting me use the phone. He awkwardly swung the briefcase aside as he reached for the door handle. But she started to protest. Before she could stop him, James slipped out into the street. He ran the whole way to the museum, sneakers thudding against the wet pavement, Marvin clinging to his wrist. He stopped only for the walk signals at the end of each block. It was evening now and the cottony grey sky had darkened, yielding to the deep blue of another wintry night. The snow fell steadily at first, melting when it struck the ground and then gradually dusting and coating everything it touched. 
From his snug hiding place, Marvin watched this transformation with wide eyes. By the time they reached the museum, a veil of white shrouded the city, softening its edges, quietening its sounds, as welcome as a benediction. As soon as James walked through the front entrance of the museum, he was stopped by one of the security guards. Wait right there, son, the man said, clapping a beefy hand on his shoulder. What's your name? James Terrick, James answered nervously. I thought it was you, the guard boomed. Your father is going to be mighty glad to see you. Security's been combing the place. Good thing they told us what colour jacket you were wearing. He unhooked a radio transmitter from his belt and spoke into it. Ed, I've got the Terrick kid. Yeah, right here at the main entrance. They are? OK, I'll take him up. He turned to James. Your dad's upstairs in Miss Bal- Balcony's office. Let's go. What have you got there? He pointed at the briefcase. Oh, just something for my dad. James said quickly. When James walked through the door of Christina's office, he was immediately engulfed in Carl's tight embrace and Christina Christina rushed over to them. James, James, where were you? You scared me, buddy. I thought something had happened to you. Carl crouched down, gripping James's shoulder. You can't go off like that. We've been looking everywhere for you. Marvin, peeking out from underneath the jacket cuff, could see that Christina's pretty face was pinched with worry. Oh, James, I'm so glad you're all right. We've lost too much today already. I know. I'm sorry, James said, burrowing into his father's chest. But it was something important. I... He took a deep breath and stepped back, looking at both of them. I found fortitude. What? Christina and Carl spoke in unison, staring at him. Here, James said simply, holding up the briefcase. It dangled in the air, scuffed and innocuous. Nobody made a move to take it. Look inside, James said. Carl frowned, lifting the briefcase and setting it on the table. He unlatched and opened it, looking at the layers of protective paper. What's this? he asked James. Whose is it? Christina's brow furrowed. It's Denny's, isn't it? Where did you get this, James? Look, James said again. It was Christina who moved forward now, lifting the protective wrapper. Suddenly she stopped, her hand gripping the edge of the table. Marvin scrambled up James's sleeve to his collar for a better view. Carl, Christina said. What is it? You do it. Carl removed the last sheet. Oh my God, he said. Keep going, Marvin wanted to say. You're about to see the four virtues together for the first time in decades, centuries maybe. But Carl needed no encouragement. Gently, with held breath, he removed the tiny drawing. He turned to Christina. It's the real one, isn't it? She couldn't take her eyes off it. When she nodded, he removed the remaining package. Oh, my God, he said again. Christina, Christina, it's all of them. Marvin saw Christina's knees buckle and Carl caught her elbow to stop her from falling. How could that be, she said, her voice barely audible. I don't know, Carl said, turning to James, who pressed against him, his face a blur of confusion. But it is. Look. He set the four drawings in a row on the table. Fortitude. Temperance. Prudence. Justice. (gasps) Christina gasped. Carl kept his arm around her, holding her up. He looked to James for an answer. James, red faced and wide eyes, stared at the drawings. Marvin huddled under the jacket collar, afraid to move. Christina bent over the tables, her eyes following each graceful line. I can't believe the words caught in her throat. They're all here. Thank goodness Marvin was able to show James uh, that the briefcase was Denny's. I wonder what will happen now that James's dad and Christina know all about it.